Have you ever felt overwhelmed with all that's going on in the world? Sometimes we don't realize that we can make a difference. My name is Debbie Van Grieken, and it is my hope to inspire you to take small steps towards social impact. Join us each week as we have conversations with those who have taken simple steps towards living a more sustainable and socially conscious lifestyle. If you want to make social impact, let's start small. The Small Steps Podcast is proudly sponsored by Moya Shea Products. As a listener, enjoy 15% off your online purchase. Use code SMALLSTEPS15 at checkout. At Moya, we believe in people helping people. Supporting the local and global communities that help our organization succeed is very important to us. We apply a fair trade framework when purchasing raw materials, supporting farmers and families. Thinking global and acting local, Moya works with organizations to better the lives of children through education and fair trade. Are you looking for the best moisturizer for beautiful, healthy, glowing skin? Our Shea products are superb moisturizers and have exceptional healing properties for those suffering from skin issues. Check out these products and our wellness line at moyasheabutter.com. Welcome back to the Start Small podcast. I'm your host, Debbie Van Grieken, and today I am so happy to be joined by Kobe Hicks, who is the founder and owner of Refillery Market in Burlington, Ontario. She is the mother to two boys aged two and four and wife to her best friend of more than 15 years. While Kobe was on maternity leave in 2018 with her second son, she could not tolerate all the plastic that was leaving her house. The more research she did, Kobe found out that nearly 86% of Canadian plastic waste goes into the landfill and not recycled like she thought. Kobe wanted to start refilling her jars instead of purchasing new packaging time and time again but was not able to find a local solution. More research was done and Refillery Market was born, a place where you can refill your jars with Canadian-made home essentials. Hi, Kobe. It's so great to have you with us today. So great to be here. Thanks for asking me to join. So you're from Burlington. So that's a small world. I actually, I was born and raised in Burlington. I still have family there. And I discovered that you know some of my family members. Very small world. So now you've actually started a business there. So I'm so excited to talk to you about this because it's such an incredible business that you've started, this refillery. And I really was shocked, actually, when I was reading your bio, you stated a pretty shocking statistic that 86% of Canadian plastic goes into landfills. Doesn't that just blow your mind? It does. So when you heard that, you took action. So can you just share with us what was kind of going through your head when you heard that and discovered that and why it prompted you to start this business? I was raised, my mother, father, always, they always taught me, you know, be aware of your environment, you take care of your environment, mother nature will take care of us. So I was always raised to be aware and like, make sure you're, you know, you're recycling and you're reusing when you can. And and that's always stuck with me. But then I think over time, you just you start to lose sight of it. But having your food wrapped in plastic, that's just becomes the norm. Yeah, it's just everywhere. And you can't do anything about it. And I'm ashamed to say that I kind of just those are my options. So I've stuck with them. And I didn't even think about, well, maybe you don't need to do that. Right. And I was watching a CBC documentary is the marketplace. And it's, it was specifically about all of the plastic waste in the grocery industry and all of the waste. And that just started uh, what's it called? Like you go down a rabbit hole. Yes. And I, I couldn't stop. And then I started like analyzing my blue bin and what I was contributing to the recycling. I mean, like, you think you're doing the right thing by buying plastic, you use what the contents are, then you put it in the recycling bin. But then when I found out it's actually going into the landfill and I was part of the problem, I was like, oh, that's not okay. I need to make some changes. So I was on maternity leave with my second son and that's when it started. So I think the first the real kicker for me was I was putting my Costco size laundry detergent tub into my blue bin. What am I doing? Then next came my dishwasher tab bucket. That was plastic. Why can't I just refill this stuff? I mean, the the packaging still works. The dispenser still works. It can still hold liquid. I'm throwing out a perfectly usable package. Why can't I just refill it? So that was back in 2018 and I couldn't find any local filleries. So I just kind of research started from there and I knew what my main goal, like my core goals would be. I wanted Canadian 
I also wanted to make sure that if I was going to source liquids, I needed to make sure that the supplier had the same beliefs as me. So right. for example, all of my suppliers, they ship me 20 liters of liquid in like one of those big carboys. Once I'm done with that liquid, they take that packaging back. They say, you know, there's, there's like nothing worse than like having these values and then finding a supplier, like for myself, having my, my company, I'll seek out somehow, oh, this is so great. I'm switching to an eco package. And then it arrives and it's wrapped in plastic or it's, you know, they can't take it back. And I'm like, what? It just, it makes no sense. Yeah. It's so frustrating, isn't it? Yes. Like, it's not logical. You're wrapping this eco-friendly packaging in plastic. I know. Uh, and it's so frustrating. So there's, I mean, of course, there's been lots of learning curves and I, I too have made those mistakes. But yeah, that's kind of where we started. So I, I applied to be at the Burlington Farmer's Market and started from there. And so what kind of products do you carry in the refill? You talked about, you know, wanting to replace some of the stuff that you were using personally. So the laundry detergents and things like that. So what kind of products can people come and refill? So I, I pretty much have every liquid from up to your bathroom down to your laundry room. So that covers things like shampoo, conditioner, body wash, mouthwash, toothpaste, then down to the kitchen, we've got like hand soap, dish soap, all-purpose cleaners, laundry detergents, cleaning vinegar, toilet bowl cleaner. I've just now brought in refillable like hairspray, hair gel, things like that. So I keep uh, trying to, if I'm running out of a product that I've had for a year or two and I want to be able to refill it, that's when I start adding in new laundry. Right. A lot of my clients will say, can you source this for me? So that's been really helpful. That's amazing. Now, how does it work? So people come with their own jars or do you provide the jars? And, you know, how does that process kind of look? So I don't have a store setting. I am a sole pop-up market. Quick story about that is I was about to sign a store lease in February, 2020. Hemming and hawing, I'm like, maybe it's not the right time. And then the pandemic hit. So I was so thankful that I didn't. And what I did is I slipped my whole business model to an e-commerce model. So throughout the entire pandemic, I offered delivery. So how that works for delivery is a mason jar will show up at your door. You choose the size that you want. There's a $2 fee built into the cost. You'll then take that full jar of whatever liquid you've ordered. You can refill your own jars or you can just pop like a mason jar pump on top and just use it like a hand soap. Once you've used all those liquids, you can go ahead and place another order online. You set those empty mason jars outside on your front step. Once we come and do the delivery, we'll pick up those mason jars and then credit you $2 for returning the jar. Awesome. So it's just a transfer vessel between the two of us. Just uh, touched on kind of thinking about going into a store model and then the challenge of the pandemic hit. And so you did this really cool pivot. What other kind of challenges are you finding though, running this type of business and fulfilling what you want to see happen with it? I I want to say challenge, but it's been a learning curve. So of course, the pandemic's happened. I have two young boys home, age two and four. They were home with me and it's just me. So it's me doing the sourcing of the products, filling your orders, posting online from A to Z. I'm trying to do all that. And I had two kids at home and I have my husband upstairs doing a full-time job, which is sales, who's constantly on the phone. <laughs> so right. it's been busy, but it's been really cool because prior to me starting this, I was in the nine to five HR world. I had a list. This is what you need to get done today. Now it's like you're in all departments. Right. Things out, which I like. It's a it's a really fun challenge learning every day. Yeah, I know. And it, it is kind of such a time sucker when you have to do all of these things. You know, I find personally when I have to do my social media, all of a sudden, I, you know, my five to 10 minutes that I allotted to do my post turned into an hour because I was, you know, seeing everybody else's posts and responding and doing this and that. And it's so challenging. I know how challenging it's been for me having my husband home, grown children, taking university courses, coming in and out. And so I can't even imagine with, a, you know, a two and a four year old that just, oh, that kind of brings back anxiety for me when <laughs> working and raising all my kids. It's just been like, I'm really sympathetic to all the moms out there who are really trying to juggle their careers and their businesses and have to deal with homeschooling and little ones. What a challenge. Yeah, it's day by day. Yeah. You look at it like 
how am I going to get through these next six months? Then you're going to go crazy. So that's, I just said, okay, we have 12 hours. Let's focus on just these 12 hours. I've moved into uh, grandma status. So my oldest son now has two young babies. He's got two under two. Uh, so they're busy and, and his uh, wife is, you know, home with them too. So I'm now trying to be able to go over there, you know, set aside some time so that I can go over there and help out once a week and, and give her some time to get stuff done because I remember I remember the challenges but speaking of children and raising kids and you know having a business these are lessons that kids learn they watch us do these things and especially when we're involved in work like this where we're really trying to help protect the environment and how do you incorporate your children are still very young but they're still at an age where you can still shape how these values are in your home. So share with us a little bit about how people can talk to their young ones about recycling, about reusing. How can we get those conversations in our homes? So like you said, my kids are still little. So we just have organic conversations. A lot of the times they are now pointing out to me, like, mom, that's look at the garbage on the ground. That's not okay. Or why is this fruit covered in plastic at the grocery store? So uh, we talk about it a lot, actually. And often we'll go hiking up on the Bruce Trail and have an extra bag with me. And we'll end up picking up garbage along the way. They like contributing and they like helping clean up. They feel good about themselves after. So they're very visual learners, as am I. I mean, I'm not going to sit down and just speak to them about it. I like to go out and show them. So we will often go out and just help do what we can. And uh, we've been a part of a few like garbage pickups in the local area. We were down at the lake through the city of Burlington. So things like that. I mean, I think it brings a lot of awareness because they're seeing it and it's it's right in front of their face. And now they're starting, especially my four-year-old, he's really starting to ask a lot of questions. Why did we start doing this? Or why is this everything covered in plastic? So I like just kind of taking his lead. That's so great. It's such a good tip too. I've always really encouraged families to, to do a cleanup, a local cleanup in their area. We live in the country and just yesterday we were out for our walk. And now that the snow has started to melt, it's starting to uncover a lot of debris and a lot of garbage and you know, I was walking and I was getting kind of agitated because it was obvious that people were just throwing this out their car windows. Now, some, I believe, have come from recycling boxes that have maybe the wind or the weather have carried it some distance, but there's some obvious stuff that was just, I mean, we're on a rural road and there was about 50 cigarette butts in one little pile. So someone obviously just dumped their ashtray out of their car window. And, and so it was like, oh, so frustrating. Why? I know, I know. It's just, it gets me so down sometimes, but then that's it. Then the next time I'm like, okay, well, today's walk is going to involve the bag coming with me and we're going to do the cleanup. And I love that I just a, a few farms over is my mother-in-law and I'll be driving by and she's out there with a little bag and she's cleaning the dish. So it's, it's nice there, there are people who definitely care and want to do these things. And that kind of warms me back to humanity again. (laughs) I couldn't agree more. And and I I love that saying, like, when you know better, you do better. So it's just hope that those people will eventually get on all will all be on the same path soon, I hope. But I really also believe that every small thing that you do really helps. So, I mean, cleaning up your ditchway or like cleaning up in front of our house from the windblown garbage, it does matter it's not going to pile up. So it really does. Now you talked a bit, like you got this statistic, you were watching the marketplace and and heard the statistic. What other kind of resources have you found out there that might be helpful for people to start to bring more awareness to this issue? I'm sure there's some more like documentaries or, or books or sites that you've found. It's just a lot of like organic research, I think. Yeah. And I think that that's such a great place to start is just doing a Google search and just finding like typing in small ways to make a a difference in environments. I know I've been really enjoying some Instagram accounts that talk about swapping this for that. And it's so easy to find those. If you're on Instagram, you can type in some hashtags like sustainability. And once you type in that, it will give you a bunch of accounts that you use that hashtag and then you can start following the accounts that seem a great point I definitely like to go through the Netflix documentaries and 
check out which ones are are uh, relevant to the things I like. Not all of them are great. Some of them actually fluff over some of it and some of them are way, way too deep. And I'm like, that's too overwhelming for me. And, and then it's the reality. Like, yeah, you can't see that. <laughs> yeah, that's why we really like to break it down to small steps, because I don't want people to get overwhelmed to the point where they can't do something. Because like you said, everybody can do something. And, and just the simple fact of refilling their jar. I mean, it's so simple. It's such a small thing to do, but it has such a huge impact. I think so too. And and I often get the question, well, can I refill my plastic jars? Of course you can, because then it's not single use. Then you're continuing to reuse what's in your house. And that's what's really important. Like those plastic soap pumps, they still work. Just refill them. And then it's safer, especially if you have small kids in your house. Yeah, for sure. So when I started my business, Moya Shea Products, I started putting, because I didn't know any better, this uh, five years ago when I was starting, I started off in black plastic jars because that's what was good for the product. So it was, you know, keeping light out and it was keeping it fresher and it was for for, as a business person, it was a cheap alternative to expensive packaging and, you know, not being fully aware of the impact that that would have. That's where I started. So like you say, when you know better, you do better. So I discovered that first of all, black plastic wasn't even being recycled anymore. And I don't think people understand that, that the recycling plants can't differentiate between the black plastic and other plastics. So that's when we made the decision to switch all of our packaging to a more eco packaging. So in doing that, we do know that there's still a lot of that original packaging out there. So we started talking to people about ways they could reuse the plastic jar. And there's so many great uses for reusing your plastic cosmetic containers. So, you know, obviously, you know, taking them and refilling them with product from places like yours and then finding creative ways. I know I have one junk drawer in my, uh, my kitchen Island that you open up and it's all the little round containers and they're now filled with paper clips and yeah. ones, you know, my little candies and, you know, all the different things that we have in the junk drawer is organized with these. I saw someone had glued a bunch together and put it in their sock drawer and they put all their socks and organize their socks in it. So I thought that was really cool. That's great. Yeah. So it's um, just finding those creative ways to reuse some of the plastics that we do have in our house. That's just it. So now things are starting to open up again and we're seeing hopefully some, some rays of hope in this pandemic. How do you envision your business moving forward? What do you kind of hope to see happen as we start to go into spring and summer and hopefully a little bit more open? Yes, we are looking forward to that. So as of right now, I, I will stick with the, the markets again. So I'm at, up at the Conan Nursery Market that's every Saturday until the beginning of April. Um, uh, and then I'll be back at the farmer's market this summer. But a focus that I'm really looking excited about is businesses. Right now, I have um, a few clinics that refill through me. So all their, their hand soaps and like their all-purpose cleaners, things like that, because they too want to be on the right path of being sustainable and eco-friendly. So I think that that's something that I would like to tackle in 2021 is is just trying to reach out to more businesses to see how I can help and in, in limiting their their plastic usage and just refilling what they have. That's amazing. I think that that's such a great way to go. You know, we always talk about individuals and stuff, but we do realize that it's the corporations that are causing the majority of the waste and the issue. And, you know, the individual seems to be the one that's taking more of a lead in trying to make a difference. So really getting in with these corporations and seeing them make some changes on the foundational level is so important. I was just wondering how people could maybe connect with you if they know, or if they run a business and they want to start making these changes, what's the best way for them to connect with you? Through any of the social media channels, so you can find me on Instagram through Refillery Market, or you can shoot me a quick email. So it's at refilleriemarket at gmail.com. 
and that's me answering it. So it's, it'll come straight to me. That's great. Yeah, because you're right now you're a one woman show doing awesome. So we'll make sure all of that is in the show notes so people can connect with you. And I look forward to watching your journey as you continue to do the good work that you're doing. And I'm so happy we were able to connect. And now I have a reason to go visit some markets in Burlington. I will be visiting family and I'll have to come and bring them with me to the markets and check it uh, out. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you in person. That'll be great. Well, thanks so much for taking the time with us today. I really enjoyed our talk. And for all our listeners, this is such an incredible way that you can start making those small steps to make a huge impact. Just start by refilling your jars, refilling your products that you've already been purchasing and being mindful of what you're bringing into your household. So when you're out shopping, does this container have another use that you can use? Will it be a one-time purchase? These are the things that Kobe wants you to to start to think about as you make these decisions in your life and make sure you're talking with your kids and connecting with them and showing them a better alternative. Thanks so much for joining us again, Kobe, and have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Start Small. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and found a small step you can take today. Make sure you share it with a friend. And if you have not done so yet, Make sure you hit the subscribe button, and if you are enjoying this podcast, consider taking a moment and leaving us an honest review in your Apple podcasting app so more people can be inspired to take small steps towards social impact.